Okay, so welcome to the second video on the retinoblastoma protein. Okay, so in the first video what we discussed was the cell cycle uh, overall. And uh, we talked about how this transition from the first growth or gap phase to the S phase where you are copying the DNA is very, very important. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this transition in a bit more detail. How does a cell actually copy its DNA? What is the trigger that makes a cell copy its DNA? And basically, the thing that happens in uh, cells which are going to copy their DNA is that a protein known as cyclin D goes up. So basically, if cyclin D goes up uh, in your cell, then what it does is it goes and activates another protein known as cyclin-dependent kinase 4. So where should I draw cyclin-dependent kinase 4? Um, right, so we'll draw cyclin-dependent kinase 4. It needs to have, okay, so let's say this is cyclin-dependent kinase 4 with its active site there. So this is cyclin-dependent kinase 4. And often um, people abbreviate it to CDK4. Cyclin-dependent kinase 4. And it's really important in controlling uh, the checkpoint uh, from the well, the transition from G1 to S phase. So this is often abbreviated as CDK4. Right. So basically, when the cell is not dividing, cyclin-dependent kinase 4 is inactive because it doesn't have cyclin D, uh, cyclin D bound to it. But when you want to go through this... Um, through this G1S checkpoint, when you want to start copying your DNA, what needs to happen is that you need to produce cyclin D. Cyclin D will then bind to um, cyclin-dependent kinase 4. So let's show this. So cyclin D is going to come along. It's going to bind to cyclin-dependent kinase 4. So here is the cyclin D. And here is the cyclin-dependent kinase 4. And basically, that activates the cyclin-dependent kinase 4, and it is now going to uh, lead to changes in the cell, which are going to lead you uh, into dividing, uh, into copying your DNA. So this is cyclin D. And let me just add a little bit of color onto this diagram so that it looks nicer. So we'll denote cycli cyclin D in this pink. Here is cyclin D now bound to our CDK4. Okay, right. So, what does CDK4 do once it's actually activated? Well, basically, it's a kinase enzyme, so it's going to phosphorylate groups on the side of um, the side of proteins, basically. So let's turn over and see which protein cyclin D is going to phosphorylate. Well, it's going to phosphorylate the retinoblastoma protein. And to understand the importance of this, we need to understand what retinoblastoma protein is actually doing. Okay, so let's just have a little interlude where we discuss what is usually stopping cells from dividing and how is cyclin-dependent kinase 4 going to stop that? Well, basically, retinoblastoma protein's role in life is to stop the cell going into S phase. So, let's draw retinoblastoma protein as follows. Um, we'll draw it as a big sort of protein like this. Okay, so this is the retinoblastoma protein, or the RB protein. Um, off, sometimes you'll see people refer to it as RB1, uh, but RB1 actually refers to the gene that makes the retinoblastoma protein, so it should just be referred to as RB, but occasionally you will see people refer to it as RB1. Okay, so this is the RB protein, so I'll put that in here. What is this protein usually doing? Well, usually it binds to another protein, uh, which, uh, well, it actually binds to a protein dimer, which is, let me show you the protein dimer that it's usually bound to. It's usually bound to an E2F transcription factor here and a dimerization partner for E2F. So E2F is a, a type of transcription factor. There are many different types of E2F transcription factors, but as far as we're concerned, they all do the same thing. Uh, so uh, E2F doesn't just exist on its own. It has another protein known as its dimerization partner there, and they go around together, basically. E2F doesn't like to be apart from its dimerization partner, so they form this sort of complex together known as the E2F-DP complex. So this is the 
E2F DP complex. And DP just stands for dimerization partner, so I'll just put that. Dimerization partner of E2F, if you like. Dimerization partner. But it's a protein. Right, so basically, uh, this E2F DP complex doesn't isn't allowed to just exist on its own in the cytoplasm because what it actually does if it exists on its own is it goes into the nucleus and binds it's a transcription factor a very potent transcription factor and it binds to the uh, the e2f box and causes the transcription of those of genes basically um, so to stop that the retinoblastoma protein is usually bound to this E2F transcription factor with its dimerization partner and is blocking that E2F DP complex from actually going into the nucleus and causing transcription of a whole bunch of genes. So that's retinoblastoma protein's role in the cell. It is inactivating the E2F dimerization partner complex. Right, so what happens when cycling D goes up? Well, cycling D, as we know, uh, causes the activation of cyclin-dependent kinase 4. And when you get this cyclin D CD4 complex, so I'll draw it over here. So here's our cyclin D bound, bond, bonded to um, CDK4 here. Okay, and this sort of complex is often known as a cyclin D CDK4 complex. CD K4 complex. Right, and basically what it does is when this cyclin DCDK4 complex is active, the, um, the cyclin-dependent kinase 4 enzyme comes and adds phosphate groups onto this retinoblastoma protein over here. So what happens is that you add phosphate groups onto this retinoblastoma protein and it changes conformation. So let me show you it changed in conformation. So basically, it changes in conformation, and as a cartoon, I'll show it like this. So retinoblastoma protein changes in conformation when you add phosphate groups onto it, and, e and CDK4 usually adds two phosphate groups onto a retinoblastoma protein, like so. So it's added these phosphate groups onto retinoblastoma protein, and that's caused um, the retinoblastoma protein to change conformation. So it is cyclin-dependent kinase 4 that has done this. It's a kinase, it adds phosphate groups onto things, so it is responsible for this. Um, so retinoblastoma protein has now changed conformation, and what does this mean? Well, it can't bind E2F DP complexes anymore. So the E2F transcription factor, along with its dimerization partner, they're free to go, basically. The police guard has been disabled. They are off. Right. And what are they going to do now? Well, they're going to translocate into the nucleus. And when they translocate into the nucleus, they're going to bind to DNA, and they are going to um, activate the transcription of a whole bunch of genes. And those whole bunch of genes are then the genes which are going to code for proteins, which um, are then involved in copying the DNA. So basically, this is going to go off, and it's going to force the cell to make a whole bunch of proteins which are going to actually copy the DNA, so the DNA polymerases, for instance, and all the other things that are involved in allowing the DNA polymerase to bind to the DNA and actually copy it. So, basically, when E2F and its dimerization partner are active, you are going to get um, the replication of the DNA. So, let's just show that. So, if we have here our nucleus of our cell, then basically E2F and with its dimerization partner, is going to go into the nucleus, and let's say this is a piece of DNA here. Basically, there are certain promotion promoter regions for uh, genes which uh, bind E2F with its dimerization partner very well, so this E2F DP complex is bound well. Okay, and it's important to understand that it's not just E2F that needs to bind to the DNA. E2F needs to bind with its dimerization partner. And these promoter boxes which, um, which like to bind this E2F DP complex, those are known as E2F boxes, basically. So this is an E2F box. And basically, it just means a portion of DNA uh, to which this um, E2F DP complex will bind. 
and this is in the promoter region of loads of genes. So you'll have E2F boxes in the promoters of a whole bunch of genes. So let's say the gene is down here somewhere maybe. A little bit out of scale, but there's the, there's the gene. Okay, and basically, if the E2F DP complex comes and binds here, it will make it more easy, it will increase the affinity of RNA polymerase uh, for binding to that portion of DNA. And RNA polymerase will then um, transcribe this gene uh, more often, and you'll get more mRNA corresponding to this gene, and if you get more mRNA, then that mRNA is going to be translated into proteins, so you'll get more protein. So, basically, it increases the expression of those genes with this E2F box um, as its promoter region. And basically, the genes that have E2F boxes as their promoter regions include all the genes which create proteins that are in, uh, that are important for copying the DNA. So basically, you upregulate all the proteins which replicate DNA, and that's going to cause the division of the cell. Um, oh, sorry, not the division of the cell, the division, the replication of the DNA. So this causes the production of the proteins involved in DNA replication. Proteins involved in DNA replication. Okay, so that leads to the replication of the DNA, basically, and therefore you have moved from the G1 check, uh, the G1 phase of the cell cycle to the S phase, and it's this checkpoint, this retinoblastoma protein, that is usually stopping a cell from moving from uh, the G1 phase to the S phase. And when cyclin D goes up, it will activate the CDK4 enzyme, and those together will then uh, inactivate retinoblastoma protein and push you from G1 to S phase. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.